Oh, you who believe, fear Allah and give up that which remains of your desire for riba. If you were truly believers, and if you refuse to give up your desire, then beware of a war with Allah and His Messenger. Allah and His Messenger have declared war upon you. in human history people don't know if you listen to these people nobody knows what's going on where did all that money go to it just disappeared what does Allah say in the Quran Allah will make interest vanish that's what the Quran says Allah will make interest vanish that's what it means. It means to make it vanish. It just disappears. It just disappears. But he will cause charity to increase. He causes charity to increase. Arriba. The hadith says, Arriba to Eddi il al faqr wa in kathurat. That interest, usury, leads to penury, to poverty to impoverishment, even if it multiplies vastly. So it means that the people that, that take interest and give interest and write the contracts for interest, they have themselves made a proclamation of war against God. Now, if you're innocent and you don't know this, you're not responsible because you didn't know. Interest was created by a group of people that allowed a small group of people to wind up owning the properties of people for nothing. And after that, to not only own their properties, but to wind up owning and controlling the lives of even their children and their grandchildren for nothing. Through interest, different countries wind up in a situation what they call international debt. So that countries are given money and they can't pay that money back. And so what happens, the people or the banks who have already been paid that money, another group of people go in there and take over the natural resources of that country, rule that country, run that country for hundreds of years on the basis of what? A debt that started out and built up interest. So Allah says, whatever wealth you deposit so that it may grow and flourish, then in reality this does not grow and flourish with Allah. And whatever zakah you give, seeking Allah's pleasure, these are the ones who shall witness an increase in their wealth. There are over 200,000 slums on this planet. Out of the 20 biggest slum countries, 10 of them are Muslim. Some of the biggest slums in the world are in Muslim countries. There are people in Cairo that live off the garbage heaps, that go and live off what other people throw away. This is the type of planet we live on. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us about neglecting the needs of these people, about neglecting the needs of the poor, the hungry. While people are so busy with their wealth accumulation, they forget that not only do they have far more than they need, but there are other people that have far less than they need. If they concern themselves with those people, Allah promises that their wealth will multiply. Shaitan promises you poverty. Everybody's afraid now. Well, it's just another day in Bangladesh. It's just another day in Nigeria. It's just another day in the vast majority of this planet. All these people that are afraid, welcome to the world. So riba means increase, to flourish. Zakah means to increase, to grow and to flourish. Both riba and zakah mean exactly the same thing linguistically. But in reality, they are different. Riba increases, apparently, in calculation, in numbers. But riba actually diminishes in reality with Allah in terms of barakah, blessing and actual usage. Zakah grows, apparently diminishes, is reduced, is a loss. But in reality, in terms of barakah, in terms of blessing, in terms of usage, and especially with Allah, zakah actually grows. And in the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, never did any wealth decrease or was it reduced by giving in charity. And we need to come to that understanding because if we believe in the unseen, then we can't repose our confidence and lay our trust and place our faith only in the apparent me. So if we see 100 and it grows to 110, we think that's better. We have 100, we give 10 in charity, it's reduced to 90, we think that's not good. That's a simplistic, human, non-Islamic way of looking at it. You earn one pound interest, or even a penny interest in, on the, the barakah of that 100 pounds will be demolished. And I'm not using the word demolish harshly. Allah says in the Quran, يَمْحَقُ اللَّهُ الرِّبَا وَيُرْبِ الصَّدَقَاتِ Allah, mahq means utter destruction. Allah destroys, abolishes, eradicates, eliminates, wipes out riba. وَيُرْبِ الصَّدَقَاتِ And Allah causes charities to flourish. We have to believe in that. No matter what we see before us. Allah says, the parable of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is that of a seed. Habba means a grain, a grain of corn, one single grain. That one grain gives rise and causes seven ears of grain to grow. In each ear of corn are a further hundred grains or seeds. So one seed, one grain will give rise to seven hundred. One pound will give rise to 700 pounds in the Book of Allah. And that's minimum. Allah ends the verse by saying, Wallahu yudha'ifu liman yasha, and Allah multiplies from whom He wills. So even more, there's no limit. 700 is no limit. We need to come to that understanding. That's why the term zakah derives from the original meaning of growing and to flourish.